like to start with this budget speech of the Honourable Chief Minister with this uh, paratrisa, that is agriculture. So I just have a suggestion because 70% of the population constitute the farming community. So I have a suggestion, sir, if uh, the government can consider. Uh, I've seen many interventions like to help the farmers to increase their income and then improve their quality of life. I also have a suggestion, sir, in, you know, in this high altitude region of the state, can we look into cultivation of apples, sir, because I think all the apples that come, I mean, that we eat, come from outside the state. And, sir, I've collected information. Jammu and Kashmir earns about 10,000 crore revenue from apple cultivation, sir. If we take up this, and, you know, at places where it is suitable, and I think Malayam is quite cold, so maybe apple cultivation will be suitable, sir. We can request the government to look into this so that we can increase the income of the farmers and allow them to grow other crops, well, uh, crops that have value to help them increase their income, sir. And, sir, another which exploitation, which has been taking place for a very, very long time, when farmers come and sell the produce, especially I'm talking about Yo Maulong markets are here in Brabaza, where about 5 to 10 kgs, it is deducted uh, by the traders from the farmers, citing that it's the weight of the, market, uh, the basket or the sack. Sir, if you weigh a basket or a sack, it'll hardly weigh two, 300 grams. But 500, uh, 5 kg, 10 kg has been deducted. Now if a crop costs 50 rupees, now 5 kg, that works out to about 250. And if it is 10 kg, 500. So I request the government to look into this so that our farmers are not exploited by the unscrupulous leaders. And then, sir, coming to uh, livestock, sir, I would request the government, uh, since there are no veterinary hospitals in those area where you know people take up uh, livestock farming dairy farming piggery i think sir if you can have a hospital somewhere in upper shillong where there's a huge availability of government land this will help the farmers sir if their animals uh, you know had to be treated for illness this can help them sir so these are a few of the things i'd like to uh, and then another problem sir when it comes to the feet i was told by the farmers that the cost of feed is very, very high, sir. I don't know if the government can provide some kind of subsidy because if you look into, sir, the amount of capital that flows out of the state to procure a meat product for consumption. So if we look into this by providing our farmers with subsidies, maybe in the long term, sir, we'll encourage our farmers to take up uh, livestock rearing in a big, big way so that we can prevent outflow of capital from the state uh, for procuring meat for our consumption. So, so some of these are for the livestock, sir. And then there are traders, sir, who when the farmers go to buy the feed, the actual weight is about 30, 35 kg, but they are charged at the, you know, the weight of 45 kg and no weighing is allowed while the farmers uh, uh, procure the feed from the open market. So if the government can look into this and provide, sir, I think it will help our farmers who are into this. Sir, uh, we're talking about this congestion of Upper Shillong Road and maybe this Shillong Dauki and Shillong Mauplan Road, sir. So I'll just like to give a suggestion. If we can create an arterial road, some arterial roads to connect with Lausatun from 4th Mile and then from Mahadev Kholasa. So when there is completely traffic jam and vehicles do not move at all, maybe smaller vehicles can be diverted that way and then come to Shillong via this Lausatun area, sir. So that is coming to road, sir. And coming to water supply, sir, as per the budget speech of the Honorable Chief Minister, it is shown here that a Shillong water supply project has been completed. So I'd like to inform the House through you, sir, that in fact they've only tested the water, sir, once. So it's not been completed, it's not commissioned. People have not received the benefit of this uh, project, sir, to get water supply to their villages. And uh, coming to uh, quality education, sir, I'd like to request the government if possible to create more high secondary schools to provide for science and commerce education and of course uh, colleges because in Malayam, I'm just citing the case of Malayam and I'm sure 
other constituencies also having a similar problem. We have not less than 20 high and high secondary schools sir, in Upper Shillong area. And I think not less than 500 to 600 students pass out every year. And so these come to, uh, to the urban centers to obtain, I mean, to pursue their studies. And when we're talking about congestion, students coming to urban centers to avail education. So if you can create more of these facilities, it will only not only help in the con congestion, of uh, Shillong City or other urban centers in the state. It will also provide, as we're talking about, uh, bringing governance closer to the people. So I'd like to request the government if we can bring education also closer to the people because, uh, sir, now the cost of transportation is very, very high and some of the parents have been crying that, you know, they need to give, I'm talking about students from Malim, sir, not less than two, three hundred every day for transportation for children to come from Malim to urban center to Shillong to pursue their studies. So, sir, if this can be created, this will help a long way. And, sir, early childhood, I've seen that eggs are provided to prevent uh, stunting and wasting to children between three and six years. I don't know, sir, if this includes school children or only children from the villages. If this can be looked into, sir, then we can help in, you know preventing stunting and wasting of children uh, within three and six years. Social security, sir, this is uh, 10, uh, chapter 10, I mean, uh, this para 10. Sir, when there is natural calamities or disasters, for example, if the house is gutted by fire, uh, earlier, sir, people were provided with immediate relief like CGI sheets, food stuff, utensils, blankets. I think, sir, uh, it has been stopped because in the last two, three years, some houses were gutted in Malim and there was no immediate relief from the BDO's office. If this can be provided, sir, because some of the families are poor, when the, everything is burnt, they don't even have utensils to cook their food, blankets uh, to use when they sleep, sir. So this I would like to highlight, sir, so that the government can look into. Sir, I'd like to <coughs> congratulate the government, sir, because uh, earlier uh, all the examinations were conducted by the MPSC or the DSCs, and sir, there was a lot of allegation that you know it's not transparent, uh, and there were a lot of complaints after the results. I would like to congratulate the government, sir, for instituting the Meglia Medical Recruitment Board, sir. I think if they can replicate in other departments also. After the exams were conducted, there were not a single complaint from the applicants uh, that there was some manipulation, or, you know, it was not transparent. It was computer-based test, and 400 doctors were recruited, and I think about 600 or 700 applied. Uh, there was no complaint that there was any manipulation. So I'd like to congratulate, and perhaps the government can replicate this in other departments so that we do not have shortage of manpower in uh, many departments, so for example, the engineers, the doctors, the nurses. So if this can replicate, or maybe the MPSC, the DSCs, adopt this method of the Megalia uh, Medical Recruitment Services Board. So this will help you know, in avoiding this controversy that there have been manipulations in all those. Sir, so these are some of the few things. Uh, and then, water supply, sir, talking about GMM, Sir, uh, I don't know exactly whether the planning was done properly by the PHE department because as per uh, information that I collected, is to be provided with 55 liters per day per head. So if you take the total population into consideration of any village, I think, sir, we'll be running short of water supply to provide through the GMM, sir. So maybe the PHE can relook, review into these so that uh, you know, people are provided with the minimum uh, requirement of water as per the GMM guideline or criteria. So. And, uh, so, water supply. So, this has become a very, very big problem because I think uh, water is getting scarce by the day. So, I request the government if these various departments can come into a convergence way of working. For example, the water resources, forest department, soil and water conservation, and PHE. Because PHE is tasked with only providing water supply to the consumers. Whereas the water supply is not available. So PHE says it's not our job to you know, uh, ensure that uh, water source where it is sourced from. So I'd like to ask the government, sir, if all these departments I mentioned 
work in convergence so that one uh, protect the catchment areas, protect the water sources, the bodies, so that PHE can uh, give adequate uh, drinking water to the pe people, sir. And then all these catchment areas, I believe there is a law to prevent, uh, uh, you know, damage to catchment areas. And if this is, this is also can be looked into, sir, then we can have sufficient, adequate water supply to be provided to the people of the state. I sir, remember. Just one more point, sir. Just one more point. Just one more point, sir. <laughs> sir, in Malayam, we have this blacksmith units. So they generate a lot of employment. Not less than five to ten people are employed in each unit. And if this can be supported, sir, in any way, so that you know more people can be employed and generate income for the people, this will go a long way, sir, in providing employment and, of course, uh, generating uh, income for the people. So, sir, I will wind up. And sir, just one more point, sir, regarding health, and I'll resume my seat sir, after this. Sir, this Omlom PHC located at Sado has been catering to the medical needs of the people for a very, very long time. And sir, the uh, population is increasing day by day. If this can be upgraded to a CHC, sir, I believe it will go a long way in providing health care as close as possible to the villages located not only in Malayam, sir, but in those areas adjoining Malayam. So with this, I resume my seat, sir. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this opportunity to air the, some of the submissions for the interest of Thank the you. people of the state and Malayam. Thank you very much, sir. Bhatongkar, uh, take care. Thank you, sir, for allowing me to participate in this uh, budget discussion. And at the very outset, I want to thank Honorable Chief Minister for uh, giving his valuable time in preparing this budget and presenting to us, to this Akas House. Sir, so due to the shortage of time, as we all understand, you have told us that we have, we have with us only 10 minutes time, so it's very short to go through the entire budget. That's why we have to prioritize to select only a few points which we really want to discuss. I want to start my discussion, sir, from the introduction that our Honorable Chief Minister has started, and we find at page three, which Chief Minister, he said, we will strive to create five lakh employment opportunities for the youth with a special focus on agri and allied sectors, knowledge and digital services, entrepreneurship and tourism. Sir, we are happy to see the determination of the government to create job opportunities to the young people of the state of Mekalaya uh, by indirect uh, job opportunities that they can get from many departments. But we cannot also forget that it is very, very important to give job opportunities, direct job opportunities to the youth of the state in the government job where our young people are really, really very keen, very interested to get a government job. Uh, we have brought the motion to discuss on this matter about the reservation policy, the need to review the reservation policy, and the uh, effect of the implementation of roster system in the district level. But uh, on that day, we could not get the time to discuss uh, on this matter. I don't want to say much on this, as uh, has been said by another members, but only one thing I want to place on record. We want to see that any system, any policy to be brought or to be implemented in the state of Mekalaya, we wish that policy, that system, should respect the sentiment of the people and everybody should get the equal right, equal opportunities within the system. That's what I wanted to put to place on record in this Akos House. Another thing that I just want to uh, state here that after the last Friday budget session when we had here, I have the opportunity to meet the Honorable Chief Minister and we discuss on this matter. And we understand, sir, that the roster system that may be implemented in the district level, the retrospective effect of the roster system may not have the impact 
in the district level because the recruitment in the district level it has been considered on 80% for the local communities in the absence of another community. So it has been considered on that crown according to the reservation policy and we believe that this retrospective effect of the research system will have no impact and there will be zero backlog in the district level. That is very, very important and we are all concerned for this and I hope that the spirit of accommodating 80% as specified in the reservation policy, it will remain and it will be implemented in all the districts of the state of Meghalaya. Sir, I want to come to the to another department that is road connectivity. I must thank the government. We have seen the achievements in road construction. And I must congratulate the government. I must congratulate the Honorable Deputy Chief Minister who led the department that the government of Mekalea has been able to construct many, many roads in the state of Mekalea. And we have really seen the change in the state of Mekalea. We can find many, many court roads in many districts when we travel. But sir, I want to tell you one thing, that if we want to see back road or no road villages, I must invite you to come to West Cassie Hill, sir. West Cassie Hill, when I speak about West Cassie Hill here, I mean for the three districts, West Cassie Hills, South West Cassie Hills, and Eastern West Cassie Hills. In these three districts, we can still find many, many bad roads in bad condition, and also many, many villages which has not been connected by road. Sir, it is very, very important, and I want to draw the attention of the government through this budget discussion to have a look west policy with regards to the road construction. I'm very happy that Honorable Deputy Chief Minister is here with us, and I want to draw the attention of the government under his leadership, sir, to have a look west policy with regards to the road construction because people residing in the entire West Cassie Hills deserve to get a better road. People staying in, the, in three districts deserve to get a better road. I want to put a suggestion from my side and I want to request the department, the officers, and the minister himself, if he thinks that it's fit to note down, I want to propose some road which is very, very important to connect from one district to another district, so that we have better road to go from one part of the district to another part of the district. We need, sir, to widen the road from Kenro to Nongkasen which is under Nongstone constituency. We also need to have a good road from Mount Haupada, Rangdekheu, connecting Marngor. This is also very, very important and it will really help our farmers in those areas. We also need, sir, to have a state highway from Jashiar, Larem, Ringi Saulia, connecting National Highway at Nongshalong. We also need, sir, to have a good road from Shimaulain, Soma, connecting National Highway at Kenshi. We also need to have a good road from Umjaran, Diwa, connecting Light Nongrim, East Kasi Hills, and to meet the National Highway at Sherwa. If we can do this road, I am telling you, sir, that these three districts will have better connectivity and we will enjoy 
going from one district to another and it will help our farmers residing in those areas. Sir, to strengthen my statement, I want to tell you and to inform the Akos House that in Maukarwat alone in my constituency, we still have 19 villages that has not been connected by PWD roads. We still have 19 villages that has not been connected by PWD roads. Yes, six villages out of this in Nongnam area, we have caught the PMJSY road, which is under construction. But I'm very sorry to say that this road, this construction, has gone in a very, very slow. And I do not know when people of those area of six villages will see the light of the day to see the completion of this road construction. But besides all these six villages, we still have 13 villages sir, that has not been planned. There is no uh, road proposal for construction uh, to these 13 villages, which I can name here as Dom Tenrong, Phot Jalei, Dom Trao, Rang Brengau, Diwian, Mau Jarang, Pom Trai, Ngundilang, Lang Tor, Nong Bak Dom Motong, Nong Dom, Nong Melam, and Mau Tengam. These are 13 villages which has no road connectivity till now. Sir, we understand that road is the backbone of the economy and we can really understand the need to have road to each and every village. Sir, without taking much time here, I want to go to air connectivity and I want to congratulate the vision of the MDA1 government. Our Honorable Chief Minister has had a vision to have helipad in the district where we have the tourist attraction and the tourist destination. Uh, and I remember, you have already crossed uh, the time limit. So please Thank you, wait. sir. You have not given yes. me a warning. So uh, let me finish. Only, only one more point, sir. Only one more point. So we... Ten minutes. Air connectivity is very, very important, sir, to promote tourism. <coughs> and I wish that this government will complete the vision of the MDA1 government to have helipad in some district where we have the tourist attraction. And I just want to tell you, sir, that in Southwest Kasa Hills, we have already identified the land which is very suitable for the helipad. And I wish the government to do the needful. Sir, at power, we understand the importance of power. And Honourable we... members, please wind up. Thank you, sir. I because will wind up with this. The that... member has to speak. Power, sir, uh, I'll just end with this one, two lines, sir. In power sector, we are supposed to be a surplus power state. But very unfortunate, sir, till now, we are still buying power and we are still struggling to pay the loan for the power that the state are utilizing. Sir, I hope that in near future, we can correct ourselves. And I have high hope to this government, to our government, that we be able to come up from this power crisis and we can be a power surplus state, surplus state one day. Thank you, sir.